Okay. This is a home interview, Oyster Bay, New York, with Irving Goldstein. The 20th of November, 2003, approximately 3 p.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? My full name is Irving Goldstein. Date of birth is June 2nd, 1915. I was born in Manhattan. Okay. Uh, what was your educational background prior to entering service? Uh, just uh, I finished uh, the tenth grade in high school, junior high school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you remember um, where you were and your reaction when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Yes, I was visiting a friend uh, with my wife, and we were listening. We were listening to the TV or something like that, and a news flash came in that uh, Pearl Harbor was attacked by the Japanese. Okay. Um, did you uh, enlist or were you drafted? Uh, no, I was drafted. Okay, so you were drafted into the Navy? I, yeah, yeah, well I wanted to go into the Army because my brother was in the Army, mm -hmm. but when I went and was drafted and I told him, so I says, okay, you're in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Give you a choice. Yes. Okay. Um, where was your induction? My induction was in the Grand Central Palace in, in, in uh, 42nd Street. I think okay, this was in June of 43? Uh, yes, uh, June, June 3rd, 1943. Okay. And um, where did you go for your basic training? Uh, Newport, Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Um, what, did you have any specialized training there or just the... No, the specialized training. training. No, I didn't have any specialized training. We just went to regular, uh, normal exercise and uh, conditioning. Yes. The only thing what was strange is that uh, instead of beds or cots, yeah, we had hammocks. Had oh, really? Yeah, I had to climb up a pole. It felt like I was a monkey. <laughs> so you were in a barracks, but you had hammocks? Yes, we slept in hammocks. That's very interesting. All right. Um, when were you assigned to uh, the Beach Naval Battalion? Uh, after graduation, which was about six weeks, I guess, to get a furlough, then we were assigned to uh, Camp Radford, Virginia. And, uh, and there it was formed uh, Six Beach Naval Battalion. Mm -hmm. Did you receive any specialized training there at all? Uh, special, specialized training, yes. Uh, we were, our job, we didn't know what it was. Uh, we, it, it was uh, Camp Radford, Virginia, ATB. So uh, I already knew what it was because somehow I had a feeling that I was being trained for something big. And so it happened to be amphibious training base. Mm -hmm. But when I rode home to my wife, so I told her I was in Army training base because they didn't want her to worry. Mm -hmm. Now, did you married then before you went into service? Yes, I was married. My daughter was eight months old. Mm -hmm. When were, when did you get married? Oh, it was 1941. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, could you tell us a little bit about the specialized training you received there? Well, the specialized training consisted of... Uh, of uh, walking and hiking to the beach, being uh, and into the water with the uh, LC, well, LCMs, P, LCVP, Landing Crew Vehicle Personnel, mm -hmm. which they drive you to the beach, into the water, and sometimes they get stuck, and you have to try to minimize the damage and everything like that. My job of uh, amphibious training was to ship to shore movement, mm -hmm. which I consisted of uh, a squad of four and uh, communicating with oncoming vessels and creating, of course, with the help of Army engineers, creating a path for vehicles, tanks, trucks, and everything to go through. Mm -hmm. Now, with you being on an LCI, how, how many in your crew? Well, LCI, no, uh, the LCI, uh, was, I went on the LCI 
is that we were preparing for the invasion. Oh, Normally, okay, so you were training on the... Uh, we always were training in, uh, in water, uh -huh. amphibious, with, with, with the Marines, ship, um, Army personnel. That, that consisted of uh, Army training, and getting off on uh, transports, APAs, amphibious personnel assault, uh -huh. and coming down to, with your gear in a cargo net, which was called Jacob's Ladder. Uh -huh. and then you went into the small boats and they took you to the beach and everything like that. How long was this training? This training was, uh, to see, from uh, the minute I got in, that was uh, after six foot from Cramp, Bradford, Virginia, about a, a year later. The moment we were planning to hit Normandy. Mm -hmm. Then we did additional training in England. Mm -hmm. How did you get it? Get to England? How we got to England? Well, we, uh, we always seemed to be moving secretly at night. Mm -hmm. And uh, from Cram, Bradford, Virginia, we were, we were taken to, I think, Little Beach, in, which was in Queens. And of course, they have St. Albans Hospital there right now. And uh, then in the middle of the night, they, they took us to, I don't know what's, uh, uh, they took us to a ship there uh, from Embark uh, to, to get on, embark on, uh, it was an English ship, the Mauritania. And we sailed from the Mauritania, we sailed from the city to Liverpool, England. Now, did you go in convoy or single ship? Uh, I don't. I don't think we went in a convoy. I think we went in a single ship because uh, the Mauritania was a faster ship. Mm -hmm. We can outrun certain submarines, I guess. Okay. Now, your entire uh, battalion was on on board. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, where did you land in England? I landed in Liverpool. Mm -hmm. And, and then from there we were taken to a base uh, in Salcombe, England, which was somewhere near Wales, Swansea, Wales, which was a huge park, like Central Park, but bigger, mm -hmm. because not only were our beach battalion there, but there was Navy, Army personnel too. There's about twenty or thirty thousand troops there. Yeah. Did you live in? Were there barracks there? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we lived in, like in a dorm, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, did you ever get to meet the uh, people, local people, or were you? Oh uh, yes, we used, we used to uh, meet the English people. Were noticed for taking walks, promenades, you know, mm -hmm. in the park, talking, and. We, on a Sunday or something like that, we had nothing to do, so we played softball, and, you know, we were, as, as Americans, uh, you know, the sport. And they came over and they saw, and they, and they spoke to us, yeah. But they weren't going to get to sight within a sight mm -hmm. distance. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, when, when did you start uh, your amphibious training there? Oh, uh, once we got squared away, we, we did the amphibious training. Mm -hmm. We went to various, various part, parts of England. We went to Bristol, Dorchester, Manchester. I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, places we went. Mm -hmm. Now, is this where you were, were assigned to an LCI? No. Uh, when we were assigned to an LCI was the day we were, before we were supposed to know that we were going to hit uh, Normandy. What kind of craft did you train on? Well, we train mostly on uh, landing LCVPs okay. and LCMs. Mm -hmm. LCM is, me is mechanized, which is tanks. Right. Thanks. right. They're uh, a little larger, aren't they? Than the yes, LCM. they're very large. Yes. 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 And so. Uh, so basically, the first time you were on an LCI was just before in the invasion. That's correct. Yeah. Do you think you were prepared for the oh. difference in the crafts, or? Well, we were, we were prepared, yes, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, we knew what our job was and everything like that. How and many on an LCI with the crew? I, I really don't know, but from what I heard, uh, according to 
were read in the paper. There was on our LCI 85. It was I think 35 uh, Navy personnel, from Beach Battalion, and about 200 Army, which consisted of engineers, Rangers, mm -hmm. and somehow uh, I think uh, also from the First Army. Okay. What, could you describe the uh, preparation for D-Day and, and your... Yeah, well, yeah, the preparation for D-Day was uh, actually uh, the English people knew before we did that we were going to go to hit France. Mm -hmm. And so uh, actually the landing was supposed to be, from what I understand, was supposed to be June 5th yes. mm -hmm. because we started out but the weather was so bad and terrible, so they came back. And so, with the astrologists and everything figuring the weather to be a little better, mm -hmm. so they picked June 6th. Mm -hmm. So we started out on June 6th. Well, June 5th, we started on June right. 5th. And we had a cross uh, English Channel. Unbelievable. In what ways? And what way the water was so rough, everybody was seasick, throwing up. <laughs> I don't think there was a clean spot. <laughs> Do you recall the, the aircraft going overhead? Uh, well, I'll tell you about the aircraft, yes. Uh, well, uh, that I can tell you later. Okay. All right? Sure. Uh, so we were getting set, we were getting set to hit uh, Normandy. The bombardment started early in the morning. I don't know what time. Mm -hmm. And one thing is, uh, when we we saw the ships, I, I I think there was about five six thousand ships that you could actually walk on them. You know, that's mm -hmm. how, how how we started out. But I think about. 30 or 37 LCIs from uh, Weymouth, England. Everybody converged at the rendezvous. I guess what well, they had their orders. And so uh, we met at that uh, in a place. And I was so astounded when I looked up and everything like that. And I went over to my squad leader. And I, I and there, there was a lot of fireworks. You know, everything was going ahead. Planes, ships, bombs destroyers, battleships. So my uh, squad leader says, you've seen enough, go down below. You, you'll see plenty when you get on the beach. So... Uh, now what, what did you wear? What kind of equipment did you wear? Oh, we wore uh, like coveralls, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, of course we had our weapon with us, a Springfield rifle and of course, a helmet and with the patch, you know, that was St. Vignified, you know, Navy. And then, um, it was, it was, did you have a, a vest on at all? A vest? Like a, a May West or a life vest or oh, whatever? No, you didn't no, wear no, those. no, no, no way. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, we, it was time for us to hit the beach. So the number one ship was the LCI 88, and we followed close behind the 85. And uh, as we got to the beach, we started in with, I was down below in the compartment, and I was talking to uh, my radio man, when all of a sudden, it's hard to believe, but it, it's a sight that I can't forget. I was talking to him and I saw a little hole being borrowed. You know, like, like somebody was drilling a hole. And then all of a sudden there was a tremendous explosion and I ducked. And it happened to be a German Shore battery that hit, you know. And then there was cries of, medic, medic, I'm hit, I'm hit, I'm hit. And, uh, I saw my uh, corpsman with his stomach spread open. And my my uh, buddy uh, Haggerty, who was with me, 
we're in the same group, caught a piece of shrapnel in, in his behind that you could put a hand through. And of course, uh, there's a lot of damage. And the ship is getting hit terribly. And then, all of a sudden, we hit a mine. Then there was a tremendous explosion and a hole opened up in the ship and water started seeping in. And so uh, I yelled upstairs, we can't stay here, we'll drown. So I said, try to come up and try to take whatever you can with you. So we took all the wounded we could, carried them atop side. And then when I thought that uh, Everything was bad down below. I got topside. I saw bodies all over. There was no place to hide. So we just laid down among the dead and the wounded for cover. And uh, the shells were exploding all around us. From later, from what I heard is that our ship was hit with 20, 25 shells. And we're lucky we weren't sunk. So How any, far out were you from the beach? We were stuck on the beach. Mm -hmm. So they had us dead to rights. But somehow, maybe an act of God, the ship, the skipper got the ship off. And so it was in a, in a capsized position, but we were able to make a few miles to the hospital ship. And at the hospital ship there, we started to unload the dead and the wounded. And while doing that, I saw uh, American planes flying over. And I cried, and they yelled out, give the bastards hell. So once we unloaded uh, the dead and the wounded, so they put me and a couple of other fellas uh, on an LCM that was going to the beach. And so we transferred over and we at the beach. Uh, and maybe it was about six or seven of us, I'm not sure, I can't, can't remember, maybe more. I chose the middle path, the others chose the side path. And as I got off the L the, the, L the you know the, 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 red, the ship or whatever, I get all excited now. So I can hear woof, woof, woof. Those are German shells, you know. <laughs> and uh, those were the ones that you didn't have to be afraid of. The ones you had to be afraid of is the ones you couldn't hear. Well, eventually. <laughs> I couldn't, uh, I went and I was looking for cover and uh, I saw uh, like a rowboat and I saw army troops behind it for cover. So I went there also for protection and then before you knew it there, uh, I didn't hear a shell. The shell hit the rowboat and uh, it uh, my head reeled like uh, I didn't know where it was. It was in, like in shock, and uh, I couldn't open up my eyes. They were tearing and all. But uh, I remember in basic training, they said that German batteries fire in force, and also that if you come in the, on the ground and uh, you have to be careful of minefields. And to avoid the minefields is to see tire tracks. If you see tire tracks, you know it's a safe place to go. And that's what I did. Through my hair-blinded eyes, like, you know, I could see tire tracks. And I climbed there, and I was gro groping my way along the beach. And I was picked up by my, my cook, some corpsman, who happened to be in my group. And then from there I was evacuated and uh, went to the hospital somewhere in, uh, I think, Southampton, England.
I spent about four or five days there. They took care of me. What kind of wounds did you have? Uh, well, a shotgun. There was a shotgun wound. There was Brian's concussion. Brian's concussion. How long were you hospitalized? About uh, four or five days. Uh -huh. And then from there, uh, I was discharged with another person from the 6th Beach Battalion. And uh, we went to a uh, base, a survivor's base, I think they called it, in Plymouth, England. And uh, we went there, we had no clothes, so we got some things from the Red Cross and everything like that. And then from there, we got, went back to our base in Selcombe, England. And from there, we went back home. How many of the men in your unit survived? Survived. Well, I don't know. No, I, well, according to this here, there's mm -hmm. about 23, 26 who were killed. It could have been much, much more, but uh, the wounded was, I mean, it was a big share of wounded. But, uh, battle, Normandy was, place was full of bodies, burning tanks, vehicles, everything. Bodies in the water. Have you seen the movie Price, uh, Saving Private Ryan? No, I couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. so you landed on Omaha Beach? Omaha Beach, yes. When you uh, returned to the States, what, what happened with you then? Uh, well, I was retained. I, uh, they gave us a 30-day furlough, I believe. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after it was over, I was I was sent ordered to Camp to uh, Camp Oceanside, another amphibious training base, which is opposite Camp Pendleton, mm -hmm. the main uh, Marine base, mm -hmm. and there I stayed there, uh, and I uh, so they wanted volunteers for uh, for ship's company, you know there was mess cooking and everything mm -hmm. like that, so. I was still reeling from the effects of uh, Normandy, so I volunteered. And so by doing that, I uh, was there in a year. And then from there, I went aboard. I was transferred to a ship, the American Legion, APA, American Personal, you know, assault. And there we did some training also because then we were at that time, I think was set to at Japan. Mm -hmm. But uh, fortunately what happened is that uh, on our way to we were on Honolulu and uh, other islands, Guam, we saw Japanese prisoners and saw, uh, then went to, to Kwajalein and then we got caught in a typhoon which was unbelievable waves 30 feet high covering the ship. And general quarters, general quarters, mm -hmm. and uh, every, all the small craft, they were, they lowered and it was got tangled into beef and everything like that. And then finally, we settled down. Then in the middle of the night, we hear bing, 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 general quarters, general quarters jump out there, I was in my underwear. I go topside, you know, you go to, uh, battle, to stations, battle stations, mm -hmm. and uh, I see a monster of a ship coming towards us. It was the aircraft carrier, the Bonhomme Richard, which broke loose from its moorings. Mm -hmm. and, it, and that carries planes and high-octane fuel. And it had straight for us and it hit us and tore a big gash into, I don't know, uh, on the right side, the left side, you know. So finally, they were able to back off the ship and uh, moor it again, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so of course, then we went back to sleep. Then again, 
we get general quarters, general quarters. This is in the same ship, broke the mooring, and it didn't hit us on the other side. So we had two gaping holes in the sides of the ship. So we weren't in a condition to go anywhere. So then we, uh, they got orders to come back to the States. And uh, so we landed in uh, Long Beach, California. And then in Long Beach, California, I had enough points to be discharged. In fact, uh, my daughter was three years old. She was there with my wife when I got discharged. And, and the irony of it is that I was discharged November 11th at 11 o'clock in the morning. And uh, it's, this was 58 years I'm with this, I was just John. Mm -hmm. So that's my story. Now, whereabouts were you when they dropped the atomic bombs? When they dropped the atomic bomb, uh, I was in uh, San Diego. Okay. Did you have a reaction? Did anyone, those around you, what was the reaction to that? <clears throat> the, the people were happy. They were happy. In fact, I was in San Diego, so when, uh, when we, Germany you know, surrendered, people were dancing in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had parades. I mean, I don't have to tell you what's going on, what's going on here in the city. Do you remember where you were, and uh, did you have any reaction to the death of President Roosevelt? Uh, I was very saddened. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, very saddened. Do you know anything about Harry Truman? Yes. You did? Yes, I know. Mm -hmm. He was a very good man. Yeah. I, I just, yeah. A lot of the people we interviewed said they weren't even sure who he was well, and so on. Yeah, the, the buck stops here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, after you were uh, discharged, did you make any use of the GI Bill? I was going to. I wanted to become a television repairman, but... Uh, at that time, uh, I don't know, I didn't think it, I was thinking of my wife and child, and uh, then of course I started to have other, other children too, and uh, I just now, which of course eventually couldn't make what it was, who knows, good fortune, bad fortune, but then eventually, I went back to the garment district where I was, but uh, then they they closed up. They went uh, bankrupt, and so then I became. Uh, I took a test to become. I wasn't unemployed or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe for one week or something, and I took a test for the post office, and became a federal employee. And that's where my I spent my years, mm -hmm. 33 years. Do you use the uh, 5220 club at all? And just one, maybe one day, mm -hmm. one week. That's mm -hmm. it, yeah. Right. Did you uh, join any veterans organizations? Yes, I belong to Jewish War Veterans, the state DAV, and I, I, I contribute to the uh, Eastern Paralyzed, I mean, and on the Forum Farm Boys. I contribute to all the aid. Yeah. Were you ever aware of uh, the existence of the camps in, in Europe, the concentration camps at all? Was I aware of it? Yeah. Yes, I was aware of it. Yes. And out of this thing, I can say one thing. I mean, I love my country. I fought for my country, for freedom. We were able to do what we could. But I'm glad, as an American, I helped in the liberation of France to free the Nazi, you know, from Nazi occupation. And most of all, I'm glad I'm a Jew. And I did my share. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned, I know you mentioned off camera about the, uh, you have a reunion group? And yes, but it, uh, every year they've had it. Uh, mm -hmm. But I had, like I say, I haven't been able to yeah. attend. Did you want to hold that photo up and I can zoom in on it? Yeah. If you hold it like right here, you can, Wayne can zoom in on that. Okay. So what, tell us about that photograph a little bit. Well, this photograph was taken uh, 
to uh, of the, the living of the people who were left and uh, eventually it's uh, they, 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 I think it's going to be the last year because uh, we veterans are fading away mm -hmm. you know now when was that photograph taken oh uh, this could have been, been taken in uh, let's see It'll be ten years uh, uh, when uh, this may be about four years ago. Mm -hmm. okay. Why don't you tell us about this? Well, this well, this was uh, when I was in Camp Oceanside, California. We had a, a parade in our honor for all the we were given. Uh, you have that. Uh, Yes. Yeah, we were presented with uh, that's the original presented with the uh, Purple Heart. They had a big ceremony. We were on it. Mm -hmm. When was this photograph taken? This was taken. Uh, Could have been uh, could have been nineteen forty. Nineteen forty four or I don't know. Okay. There's uh an award he received from friends. Yeah. Well you're wearing the purple heart in this, correct? Yes, yes. So so it had to, it had to be in 1940, 40, 45, 45, yeah. I think, yes. And I think in April, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is the, you received the quad of air. Yes. Right. Hold it right there. We also received a presidential citation. <laughs> um, when uh, could you tell me uh, how you think your time in service had an effect or changed your life? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I don't have to tell you that. Uh, when I was drafted and after I had to leave my wife and child, who was only eight months old, and go into the service, that uh, I was pretty much upset and everything like that. Then eventually, I guess with the camaraderie with your shipmates and everything like that, it helped alleviate you know, your, your fears and everything mm -hmm. like that. But one thing I want to say is that it made me a man for the fact that uh, the training that I did toughened me up. You know, I was, I was just a skinny, skinny guy. Mm -hmm. I was 148 pounds here. And uh, with the training and everything like that, and it was worth going, you know, or marching. At 15 to 18 miles a day, and blisters being formed on your feet, and doing maneuvers in the in the cold weather, in icy water, in front of the admirals and the captains or whatever it was, mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, of course at, at, at night uh, you're digging foxholes and slit trenches, preparing, and the more the sand you put out, the mud comes out, uh, everything like that. And then they had these sand flies, which were so terrible that I couldn't stand them, that I, I dove into the water. It was, I didn't know what to make out of it. Mm -hmm. But eventually, like everything else, you get used to it. You know, you used to drink from a, a canteen cup, which was rusty, put your hand, you know, mix it up with whatever it was, coffee. <laughs> 
a little bit like that. So I say it, it made a man out of me, mm -hmm. and taught me a lot. It taught me a lot of things about life, which of course helped me in, in today in reaching my age and everything like that. Mm -hmm. Of course, of all you know, health problems, but I guess I got so to it that uh, I was spared. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was there anything else you wanted to show us? Was there any other photographs there? I think there was one with some Navy equipment, I think. This? This. Well, and there's, uh, there's this one, too. Is this your unit? Yes, that's, yeah. Th this is from Camp, uh, uh, Camp Oceanside. Okay, I'll hold that up. Okay. And this was uh, some of the equipment you had. Is this the helmet yeah. that you had? The insignia, yeah. With the insignia on it? That's the way they told us the mm -hmm. difference because they didn't know who we were. Okay. Got it. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your interview. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, As about war in general. As, as German chef. General Sherman said, war is hell. That's it. Okay.